Welcome, Star Wars fans, to episode 136 of Tatooine Sons. This show was originally slated to be recorded last Thursday and released on Friday morning. That didn't happen. <laughs> Why, you ask? That's because of an incident that will forever be known within the family as, as the, the alternator, alternator story. story. <laughs> Dad will break Hint. Oh, it down yeah. for you at the top of the show. Yeah. After all of that... Hold on. I got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah. After all of that, we're diving into the last two episodes of The Mandalorian. Sam and I will give our initial reviews of Tales from the Galaxy's Edge, and we'll share our favorite moments from that stubborn but lovable droid from Star Wars Rebels, Chopper. Yeah, we don't have any Chopper sound effects. They're, like, not available. Yeah, they need to get on that. So we're going to go with this Please. one. Please. Well, that's too good. Droid, please. There we go. There we go. Time for Tatooine Sons. It's true. It's true. What is the name of the Porg on the Millennium Falcon? Force is strong in my family. What do you think his name is? <laughs> it's a big moment. I am a Jedi. Like my father before me. Maybe Turbis? Do or do not. There is no try. Turbis? <laughs> Pablo, if you're listening to this live stream, that porg's name is now Turbis. It's a good Star Wars name. We're not done yet. These guys recorded an awesome podcast called Tatooine Sons. Everybody was fit. Welcome, Star Wars fans. This is Tatooine Sun, your weekly look at all things Star Wars from the unique perspective of a father sharing his love for the amazing space fantasy saga with his two sons. I am BB Nate, and I'm joined first by my brother, Samuel Hutt. A shoot to Star Wars fans. Thanks for tuning in. And if you're not a Star Wars fan, then you can still relate to car troubles. <laughs> oh, you changed your I did, I did. Oh, wow. You threw me a curveball. Uh-huh. I want to like, see what you do with that. Kind of like my car truck. Yeah. Movie, you know, so. Yeah, and of course, you can't have Star Wars without bizarre father figures. So on that note, here's my dad, the Bowtie Jedi guy. Good evening, gentlemen. Good By the evening. time you listen to this on uh, on this podcast, it's going to be Mando Monday on our main podcast uh, release. And nice. then we've got new things happening coming out on Tuesday. So I forgot that. So um, I think the note says it's Tuesday, right? That we release this. Yes. So if you're getting it on Monday, just get over it. Okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah. So. Um, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have. A sp- and just to preface this, this all started with ice cream. <laughs> it did all start with ice cream. Yeah. Which ice cream is a wonderful thing. We love our ice cream. Ice cream's awesome. Um, Saturday evening of last week, not just a couple of days ago. If you're listening to this on Monday or Tuesday, um, but last week. Um, yeah, um, I decided I wanted ice cream. So uh, not like, you know, Dairy Queen or Baskin Robbins. Nah. I wanted like the to go get a have that carton here. of ice cream. <laughs> yeah. Uh, some Rocky Road. We were going to get you guys, uh, Sam and Nate, some different ice cream. Gra- My mom and I, mom, where Grammy come from. That's the way the day has gone. Um, last couple of days. Anyway, um, Christy and I, my, my, my amazing wife and I, wanted Rocky Road. So uh, we hopped in my, my 2008 Ford Mustang GT convertible V8. I've been typing that into Google a lot over the last week. Um, um, we topped into it and started down the road. It's about a 15 minute drive to the, go- the uh, grocery store, maybe 10 minutes, depending on the time. Had the top down. It was a nice, uh, it was n- night. after night or after uh, the sun went down. So the stars were out and we put the top down. It was like 70 degrees. It was a beautiful evening. And uh, we got about four, three, four miles uh, away from the house, and I started getting all these um, crazy, horrible lights showing up on my dashboard. And, Don't get technical with and me. The radio was and the radio the was not playing right, and uh, and everything was crazy. Now I've had some issues with this radio before. Um, and it's, you know, it's a really, really complex radio system. It's got the DVD player, even though I've only used it like once for fun just to see if it worked. And, uh, it's got like remote controls and all this fun stuff, right? Right. So sometimes the computer in that does like an iPhone. It just gets out of, con- like, it just starts wigging out on you. Mm-hmm. And so what do you do? You just reboot it, right? Hit. So. Well, no, you don't hit it. You know, this is not, this is not L3 in the Millennium Falcon, right? Yeah, this is, um, 
This is a, a computer. So I, I, I pulled the car over with Nathan. Nate, BB Nate was with me while we went to go get ice cream. I pulled the car over um, in this residential intersection just uh, off the side thinking I'll turn the car off, turn the car back on. It'll reboot the computer and the radio and we'll be on our way. Uh, so we pull in, you know, off to the side of the road, get there, and... I got a bad feeling about this. It won't start. Completely dead, right? Yep. So um, so then, uh, you know, uh, baby Nate, what, what do we oh, do? Oh, I get to tell this. Okay, so we wait there for almost an hour. I'm trying to figure out a ton of different things. Then we called roadside assistance, and they came. It took them about... Meanwhile, I find out that... My amazing and beautiful wife, Christy, um, has thrown away our jumper cables. I thought maybe jumper cables would help. Um, Which, in the end, they did. <laughs> well, we'll come back to that in a ways down the road on this story because um, we're still at Saturday um, at this <laughs> point. Um, but she get, they were all frayed and, and wires were coming out of it, and so she had thrown them away. Ugly. So she, we, she couldn't come jump me um, with those. She was, uh, you know, Sam's going to neighbors trying to find jumper cables and, and all of that. And, and so, yeah, so roadside so, assistance. Roadside assistance comes, and it's a locksmith, not a tow truck. It's just... <laughs> what is that all about? I, yeah, I, in all of this mess, we've never really talked about the fact that that our our auto insurance roadside assistance department sent a locksmith sent a locksmith to to jump my car or tow it or whatever. Uh, and it's a dad and his son, like in a minivan. <laughs> Did you did you see any of this? Yeah, thing? I just kind of sitting there, kind of just. just no, I'm letting y'all take this. Part. And okay. so they, I wasn't involved. They jump it; it does nothing. Well, no, well, it, it no. starts. It, we tried to jump it with. So mom, Sam gets uh, jumper cables from the neighbors. They bring the mom brings the jumper cables. We try to jump it with her car. Nothing happens. Yeah, right. Sammy accidentally just click, click, holds click, click, the, click, uh, click, click, click. The, yeah. Oh yeah, you sparked the. That freaks me out. I was not expecting that. Cables together. It's yeah, kind of like Baby Yoda cool. today. Um, so then, yeah. So so Locksmith shows up. He puts the you know jumper machine weird that he has alternator in his car. car. Not alternator. Thing. It's he, just, I don't know. It's a really strange machine. And he's like, okay, it started. So we close the hood a little bit. No, no, no. We we start it and it starts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. And then he takes the cables off. Okay. Assuming that it's going to work, and, and it dies. It dies. Yeah. And he's like, you've got an alternator problem. All right, so this is a start. This is the start. That was all the epilogue of the of the alternator problem. So he he basically hooks this machine back up. He's like, "You're gonna have to get towed." He's like, "I'm like, I, I okay, um, you know, I would have loved for my insurance company to have sent an actual roadside assistance company, uh, you know, tow truck or something, because you can't help me. So now I got to wait for that." And he's like, "Well, how far away do you live?" And I'm like, "Maybe three miles, or mm. four miles at most, I guess." And he's like, all right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the machine. We're going to start the car back up. The battery pack that I have that he used to jump it. Yeah. Um, he's like, let's put it on. We're going to close the hit, the hood on, uh, on top of the on machine. Top of the machine. Connected. And then you're going to put your hazards on. And we're going to hope you get all the way home before the, bow- the power in the machine runs out. <laughs> right? <laughs> so then he follows us home. We get to the driveway. We pull it in the driveway. Um take the the battery cables off it dies immediately yep. he's like you got an alternator problem that kind of thing now sam and nathan yes have i ever been known to be a grease monkey no yeah. none of us are not a handyman not a grease monkey none of it but no green thumb no i'm not i'm not that kind of guy nope. that is not who i am um but the idea of spending like four or five hundred dollars on fixing this alternator did not sound like a great idea to me at that point. Um, mm-hmm. With it, um, so the the guy that had got, helped us with the roadside assistance, he's like, "You can get a brand new version. Don't get a rebuilt one." He says, "Get a brand new one on Amazon for you know maybe a hundred and fifty, couple hundred bucks." And, and then he's kind of implying that. An imbecile should be able to get this thing up and running if if they follow the like a YouTube video or something. He doesn't actually say that, but that's the way he he suggests it, right? So, um, so you know, I I get online on YouTube. I didn't deal with it anymore that night. Actually, we got back to the house. Sam and Nate got in the other car, drove and got our ice cream because yeah, y'all wanted some freaking ice cream. I was gonna get my ice cream. So uh, we get our ice cream. We come, you know, Saturday night. We watch a TV show. We eat some ice cream. We chill. I think we're watching football. Uh, we chill out and do that. Next morning, I get up. 
I do what I need to do in the morning, and then I jump, jump, up, uh, pull up in my computer, and I start watching YouTube videos. For um, YouTube is a wonderful place. It really is. You can find <laughs> out. I mean, if you find the right videos, that's a problem that I had at the beginning. Um, I watch this video. I'm like, this looks like I can do this, mm-hmm. right? They found out I was wrong. Type so then I go out to my car to look at my engine just to <laughs> see that I see the same things that I saw in the video. No, nope, that 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 didn't work. Don't get technical with me. It was a V6 engine, not a V8 engine So on the video. So mm-hmm. uh, I had to go back and find a V8 version. And I watched four or five different guys. And most of them are like taking time explaining what they're doing while they're doing it. And it still takes them 10, 15 minutes to change out this alternator. I realize I need this special tool uh, to get the tensioner uh, released and so I can get the belt off and all this. So I look online on Amazon, 130 bucks for a brand new alternator 20 30 bucks for the the uh, ten, the, uh, the the tool for the tensioner right the, the cheater bar they called it um so i'm like okay i watch these videos I'm, they're all doing it the same way i feel like we got this done right i i let i can do this i can i can do this. sam and nate can can assist me this will be a, be a good father son bonding it'll moment it'll be a good experience work on a car together yeah get our hands dirty yeah except you know, didn't <laughs> accomplish <laughs> accomplish our goals right so uh we order it it says amazon prime you know we order it sunday it's going to be here monday yeah Woo! <sighs> Wednesday rolls by. <laughs> <laughs> no, it got here late Tuesday night huh? after dark. Yeah. Um, and then th- Wednesday, we had a bunch of stuff scheduled. You guys Saturday had night. clep testing in the morning. We I had to... meetings. We had some other stuff that we had to do yeah. um, with that. And so it was dark before we got back, and there was no yeah. way I was going to get that worked no. on on Wednesday. So Thursday. <laughs> Here it is. It's the day, right? We're going to do this. We plan out our day. I've got a crazy busy morning with work. I get all of my stuff knocked out. It's like 1.30, 1.45 in the afternoon, and we've got time. It's a beautiful day. We're like, we'll it's park not it super hot, hot, hot out. Hard. We're gonna, hard, it's not super hot out. Um, we're going to go in there. We're going to pull it. Pull up in that hood. We're going to take that alternator out, put the new one in, start the car up, and be done, right? Yeah. Uh, so we get out there. We this get, is just the beginning. <laughs> it, it's, it, yeah, this is, we're 12 minutes into the show. Yeah, so, this is going to be a long show. Uh, we'll, we'll run through the other parts faster. So um, so we get to, um, I get I get the first couple pieces off, and mm-hmm. I realize I don't necessarily have all the tools that I need, but I'm trying mm-hmm. um, to do it. I need different sockets, and I don't have them. And, and finally, we realize there's no way we're going to get all of these bolts where they're at, at the, w- the length and stuff, yeah. without a new socket set. Mm-hmm. So we jump in the car, not that car, obviously. Um, we jump in a different car and go to Lowe's, go to Lowe's buy t- uh, a socket set. set that we need, come back, start taking everything off. It's mm-hmm. going super smooth. Yeah, everything comes off, no problem. S- um, too smooth. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> we get the, the, I have to take the overhead or the, 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 the air intake, intake off. I get the air intake off, the whole si- intake system off. I get the, the, the thing I was scared most about was putting that breaker, Tensioner that cheater bar, bar on and moving that tensioner and getting that belt off. For some reason, that was scary to me, like thinking I was going to mess something <laughs> up. Get it in there. That was easy. The mm-hmm. belt comes off. We unhook the alternator. We get all the cables off of it. We get the new the one out of brand the Brand shiny. Shiny as can be. Everything else is black and dirty. And yeah, we put the new alternator piece. on. We hook all the pieces, connectors up to it. We get the over the the air intake system re uh, uh, assembled on there and put together on there. I go over to you, my, you plug your battery back. My battery cable. It. I put my battery cable back on. Turn the key. Click 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 click. click, click, click. Nothing. Click. Just nothing. Click. What was your reaction, Samuel the Hutt, at this moment? I just like mom is taking a nap. Yeah. At this point, we had to be quiet. Mm. We were, yeah. It was, so it what was, was your just, reaction? It was just defeat. We were like, crap, because we had no idea what to do. At this I'm point. like, at this point, I You're got not nothing. Car people, I got nothing right now. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. What did you think about it? Being I right? was like, we just gotta figure this out <laughs> before mom wakes up and finds <laughs> out. Because <laughs> yeah. she wanted us to go to a mechanic, and you're like, no, nah, yeah, yeah you I know, can do it. This is a Cosby Show episode, uh-huh. right? Yes. This is the most. I'm literally having flashbacks of Heathcliff Huxtable trying to fix the shower, and the sh- <laughs> the shower tiles all falling off. 
the more he's trying to fix the leak in the shower, the more of a disaster he's got. And I'm like, we've already spent all this money on these pieces. What if it's not even the alternator? And then I start to like, then the real panic starts to set in. <laughs> because what if it's the entire electrical system has gone cra- crazy on this? That could be thousands a new to car, fix. pretty much. If your computer and your entire electrical system is might gone as well on the just fritz. get that new car that mom's been wanting. Oh my gosh, I'm panicking. So, you know, we I, have, I, now go ahead, baby Nate. I you're in the car and you're like, I think it's a security system because Dad's had a security system that's always been kind of on the. Fritz. It's like it's it's not on the fritz necessarily, but it's like really really um, particular, sensitive, and, yeah, and, and sensitive intense. Stuff. Like yeah, everything shuts off if the security system notices that. Yeah, you won't be able to turn your car on. You and we did to... experience a problem with the key fob that turns it on and off just a couple of weeks ago when we were traveling mm-hmm. in that car. It and we wouldn't barely unlock. Got it open. We couldn't get the car started. None of that. We couldn't put it in gear. Couldn't None put of it, it in gear. And then all of a sudden, we we turn the key and we finally get it to do, and everything works fine on the car when we were traveling. Right. So, so that was that was good. And I step in the car, and you're like, okay, try to turn it on. You need to figure out where it's coming from. So I'm starting to turn it on. You're hearing the clicking, and I look, and there's this, the symbol for the anti-theft system. Yeah, like, so it's like off. it's got to be the lock, right? Like, it has it's, to be. It's got to be that. So Sammy and I are like, okay, maybe we need to change the battery in the key fob itself. Yeah, maybe that's like, maybe it's, maybe not it's not being able to send now. a signal. Yeah. So we decided we were going to go to Walmart. You know, another trip. Uh-huh. Um, we went to Walmart. We picked up those batteries. And meanwhile, I'm stepped back at the house watching YouTube videos on uh-huh. how to fix electrical systems in this car, so and you're I'm like, like cold sweats because there's nothing I can do yeah. uh, to fix this. And I decide at partial uh, like. Let's get jumper cables. Yeah, you're like pick Cheap up some jumper, jumper cables. We'll need them eventually someday, anyway. Yeah, let's get jumper cables. Right. right. So you guys pick up some jumper and it, cables they were and some battery for cables. Your, Walmart, yeah. You can get jumper cables at Walmart for nine dollars, and they were good. And yeah, they were good. Yeah. They're long. Um, so we need we got the battery for the key fob. We got the jumper cables. We got fuses because just in case maybe, I needed like a fuse for the alternator or something. Yeah. Um, we get all that, and we come home, and uh, I pull up in the the Kia, and you're like, "Let's just jump it." Let's no, see no, it no, 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 no. That's not it. No, let's let's try to. I replace the key fob. Oh, that's right. Um, yeah, yeah, battery, nothing, literally nothing. Then Nathan gets back in the car, or BB Nate gets back in the car. To, I'm like, "There's nothing I can do. We're gonna have to push it into the drive, into the garage, and put it in neutral. Push it into the garage." Mm-hmm. I think it was you that got yeah, in the, I got in the car. Um, so Nate, so, so Nate and I are gonna push it in. Sam's gonna put it in neutral. So he turns the key forward to where you can you know, move the transition. The brake. Press the brake. Try to move it. Now the the gear shift isn't even changing. The button, it's, won't, even the press. button won't to press. Nothing. Nothing. Happened. There's no lights on the dash. There's nothing. And so the only solution that we can have here is let's jump it. (laughs) Let's just see if jumping does something. So I step in the car like a little bit after and I'm like, okay, I'll try it because what else are we going to try? And I look on the dashboard and the anti-theft system light is still on, but it's dimmer than barely it was. Lo- barely on, yeah. And so we're like, okay, so the battery's still working. That's and true. We yeah. have a little bit of something going on. So we get the cars to where we need the cars to be, and it's barely long enough because of where I had, because I couldn't move the Mustang. Yeah. So we get the Kia over where the, the qu- cable, jumper cables are barely long enough to stretch. We hook them up to the Kia, then we hook them up to the Mustang. And what's the first thing that happens when it connects to the Mustang it, battery? Like, right as I put it on the Mustang, because it lets out a little... <laughs> yeah, the horn honks, and lights every- flash on the car. We're all like, Whoa! Whoa, that's actually promising, <laughs> right? Don't worry. There's still like 10 minutes of this story. Oh, and we're nice. going to have a fast Star Wars part of the episode. So, um, so sorry. Yeah. So uh, this is more like the, but this uh, is therapy. Tatooine Sons talk show. Yeah, this is therapy for us, <laughs> um, for at least for me um, with it, because there's more to this story. So um, we get I, we put it on. I try to jump. I immediately try to start the car and it's still just click, 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 click. So I'm like, OK, I've done this with jumper cables before. I've seen this happen. That battery is just so, wasted. There's okay. nothing in that battery. The right great now. thing, though, is when we were doing the click, click, click without the jumping, it was just like a click, click, click. But this one, it had a little bit of vibrations with. The yeah, very something fast was click. trying to do something. We're like, OK, yeah, it's, yeah. it's trying to get back to where it was. Exactly. Saturday. So night. so I had to tell Sam to rev the engine on the Kia. Let's get, get some, some juice, juice pa- powered over to the. Uh, uh, the other battery in the Kia or the Mustang after like two or three minutes of him revving the engine. I'm like, all right, keep it revved. Let's go. I start it. Boom. Boom. Starts right up. I'm like, 
thank God. I'm having a charismatic Pentecostal fit right now. I'm like <laughs> speaking in tongues. I am. I'm not really, but um, I'm like having church right there in my car. But the fuel light, I knew I was almost out of fuel. So when the car just decided to die on Saturday night, we had it said twenty to thirty miles for fuel. Yeah. I was going to get gas when we got to the gas yeah, station. Yeah, it's okay. And then we got it on for like a tiny, tiny bit. It said zero fuel, a mile still empty. And so I'm like, and crap, right. this engine is going to die because there's no gas in it, which means that the battery's not going to get charged because of the alternators, because the car's not running. So I've got to get this thing to the... And you can't shut it down because we don't know if we'll be able to get it started back exactly. up. Exactly. So I'm panicking. So you're like, Sam, get in the Kia, follow me. I'm going to... We're going to 7-Eleven. Yeah. So And we- so I go inside and I'm trying to grab my stuff. I'm like, I can't find my wallet. And you're like, it's fine. Just go, like, because we we the car is running. Like, we got to get to right. the gas station. So I'm like, so I right, jump fine. in the car and I start driving away. Yeah, I'm I like, like follow as fast as I can. I'm like speeding in this little four cylinder Kia, trying in to this keep up tight neighborhood with the yeah. Off. yeah. So, so we get over to the Seven Eleven. We get to the light where you turn left, and there's construction, and you can't turn left. And I know my car is about to die at any okay. second. The thing is, I didn't know any of this happened. Okay, so I, then, oh yeah, so here, so just then listen. we go. Uh, I have to go up like another half. You have to a go mile, to the right. Take a U turn. Do, do this crazy turnaround. Get back on the other side of the road. Get into the gas station. We're good to go. Yes. Right. I get to the gas station. I pull out my. Well, I'm like Sam. I'd given him my credit card to go to Walmart, Walmart to get the yeah. stuff. I'm like, where's that car? That credit card? I need to use it for gas. I'm like, I don't have it. I threw it on the table. And so I grab my wallet. Um, I open up. I grab the debit card. I tr- I get the gas in there. Try to start the car up. Nothing. Car won't start. Now we're sitting at Seven Eleven. I had thrown the jumper cables in the back of the Kia. The Kia. Um, before he, before I left and, uh, I, I'm like, well, we'll see if it jumps. I'm going to, it's going to jump. I'm confident now it's going to mm. jump now. It's not the alternator. The battery may be completely dead now, but the alternator is working so we can get it jumped. So the I, thing is though, we've replaced batteries a couple of times. Yeah. So, so I pop open the hood and the driving over the negative, negative cable, terminal. uh, had come off of the post because I hadn't tightened it enough. And so it hadn't charged, never the, battery. charged the battery. So I'm like, oh, that's easy. That's it. They, We're in an easy fix scenario. I get it on there. I tighten it as best as I can. Don't worry. With there's a lot more of the story. <laughs> um, there's, uh, I tighten it as best as I can uh, on there. Um, we jump the car. Starts right up. Now I've got a great. I've got it tight enough. I've got a full tank of gas. Yeah. I'm feeling good about things, right? Yeah. We're going to go to the house. I'm going to leave it running. I'm going to get my, my wrench out. I'm going to tighten that up all the way. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to take my mom's car because we've been borrowing my mom's car so I could drive around for some stuff I had to do. Mm-hmm. We're going to take it back and then we'll be that'll charge up the battery while we're doing that and we'll be good to go. Yep. Right? No. Right? So we Great get home kid. and get we're cocky. about to leave. Uh, we're, you're about to take the Mustang and then we're going to take Grammy's car. Um, I was going to drive Grammy's car but I couldn't find my wallet and mom's like, you're not driving without your license. So we're like... <sighs> we're looking for the wallet. We're looking we're look- for the wallet. You can't find your phone. And now I can't find my phone. You have no idea where your phone is. So... We're like, okay, um, you, you, okay. You're like, Sam, you're going to just come with me. You're going to hop in my car and we're going to look for your wallet. No, 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 no. This is before that. Oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So before that, I'm looking for my phone. Sam is like, well, you know, we've got that. What's the the app we use? Life 360. Life 360. So we can like track our kids, right? Because, you know, or know where each other are uh, at any point. He pulls out the Life 360 to see where my phone is. And it says it's in the, um, under like an underpass. I'm like, what in the world? And then I remember where I had left, excuse me, I'd left my phone on top of my car when we were doing all this stuff. So my car, had, my phone had taken a trip to the 7-Eleven gas station and now was sitting on the side of the road somewhere because it had come off while I was driving and now I had to get to find it. So Sam jumps in the car. We drive over. He's running around on the side of the road looking in for my, this phone uh, nice and his sandals. flip-flops. I go park. Um, I'm dealing with, you know, trying to make sure my car is going to mm-hmm. restart again. It does and and uh, feel good about that at that point. Um, and then I go and try to help Sam and meanwhile, so, Sam's like t- you know five yeah. or six minutes of looking for this phone. So I'm running up and down the side of the sidewalk looking at the app and it says it's like i should be right on top of it right now but it's just not here so i'm like all right i'll give it a call maybe i can see like a light flash or something just to see if if something happens i call and then all of a sudden there's a hello and i'm like what uh where'd you find this he's like under the underpass and what what had happened was there's road construction all up and down that road and one of the workers found it and picked it up 
I'm like, where are you? Um, he's like, just up the, the road. And so I go and pick it up from him. Uh, I find you. It, it The screen is The screen is, gone. is destroyed. It's just cracked. It's cracked and, to Like all. crazy. Yeah, it's horrible. And so now I'm like, okay, but hey, we've got my phone. Now let's go back to the house and we'll deal with all the stuff that we have to deal with with getting the car back and we'll find Sammy's wallet. I'm sure it's just sitting somewhere. And we yeah, it's probably it in the car and, or something. And that kind of thing. We get so to while the all of this is going on, I'm trying to call Walmart to see if he dropped his wallet at some point. And Walmart sucks with calling <laughs> because I'm sitting here. I it's called like 20 it, minutes. I called it four times. And each time they picked up, they hung up. Yeah. So it, so uh, we get to the house, and now it's kind of that point where everybody is like just done. You know. Yep. We're frustrated. We're stressed out. People are kind of getting testy with each other, and and all of this. And I'm like, Sam, get in my car. We're, We're going, going to Walmart. Walmart. We're going to find your your wallet. So we get to Walmart, and Sam takes me to the exact parking spot. We and walk the. Ex- he was convinced that it had fallen out of his car- pocket when he was getting in or out of the car. Yep. So we go to the exact parking spot and nothing. There's nothing, nothing there. So now we're like George Bailey and Peter Bailey, and it's a wonderful life. When he loses the eight thousand dollars, if you if you if you've seen this movie, right? They're tracing every step through the day. This is what we're doing in Walmart. We're going to the checkout area. Well, first of all, we can't even get in the door that you went in because they've got it closed because of COVID that night. Yeah, it only reason. comes out at night. Apparently, I guess. Yeah. So we. We went in the other door. We came around. We start looking. We go all the we way do to the exact path, exact same path. We go to the exact same battery section. Nothing. We go to the fuses. Nothing. We go to the battery cable section. Nothing. We go to the checkout section where each, each, the self checkout. Nothing. So all we can do now is go to customer service and see if somebody turned it mm. in. Right. So if we, there's somebody good left in this. Yeah. Place. Exactly. So yeah. we go to the the customer service uh, area. We wait in the line. We get up to the I, front. Yeah. Mom we, calls me and she's like, uh, you need to get in on your apps and uh, lock your cards. So uh, nobody so goes them. on a shopping spree. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So um, we, we, we get up there. The, the register, they don't have it. They decide to send somebody to see if it got turned into like the office or whatever mm-hmm. um, with it. And at this point, I'm like, I just need to get like... A screen protector. A screen protector for my phone so I don't slice my thumbnail off, my, my, my fingerprint, thumb, off. My fingerprint yeah. off when I'm trying to use my phone. Mm. And at least I can function with this phone um, with it. So I'm like, I'm going to go into the back. I'm going to go get a screen yeah. protector. I stay in You stay up front service. and see if they get an answer on it. And you work on your bank Cards. accounts and mm. see what's going on. So I'm walking to the back and my phone rings. Mm-hmm. It's Sam. Mm-hmm. Sam, what do you say? I call him and I'm like, um, hey, do you want to see a magic trick? I am as livid at the. I have lost all all sense of reason at this point. What is this idiot kid doing? Calling me after all of this while I'm in Walmart. We can't find his wallet. My phone is destroyed. I'm frustrated about the alternator. I'm dealing with all that. My wife is pissed off at me because I did this all. And really, none of this would have happened had we just taken the car to get worked on by somebody else. Right? I am, I am losing my mind when he asks me this stupid, stupid question. Do you want to see a magic trick? I'm dying inside. I'm like, if I'm not in Walmart, he's getting yelled at on the phone. But I'm in Walmart. So I'm like, Sam, what are you talking about? So I say, check your pocket. I'm like, check my pocket? And he's like, yeah. He's like, I'm like, your phone, your wallet's not in my pocket. I'm like, check your pocket. I pull out my wallet. You're like, it's not in there. It's, it's not in there. This bull- is I am so livid. Right? I it's a black billfold. It's a black billfold. I pull it out. It's a, I'm holding the black billfold. I open it up, and it's Sam's driver's license. <laughs> I had Sammy's wallet in my pocket this entire time. Uh, Unbelievable. So What had happened was... When yeah. I when the car started and we needed to get to the gas station, I ran in the house as fast as I can to grab my wallet. I saw the black billfold that was sitting on the table, which I threw there after Walmart, which I thought was mine. I grabbed it. We jumped in the car. I used and so how did you find out? So I'm sitting there at customer service closing down my cards. Yeah, and I before get, this, before he calls me and I lose right. my mind. Um, I check my debit card and I see there's a purchase for twenty eight dollars at Seven Eleven, and I'm like. 
Uh, now, now he's thinking somebody's got my card and they're, right. they're buying Slurpees for everybody. Like, well, what, what could this be? And then I realized, or I remembered my wallet wasn't on the table. And Nathan and I, in one of the drawers, saw your wallet. During all the kerfuffle earlier, they had both seen my wallet. Yes, but the thing is, I thought that, oh, maybe maybe he just didn't need his wallet. I thought I, maybe you had two wallets or something, because you swore up so and down So they both saw my wallet. wallet, and since I was swearing I had my wallet, they ignored the wallet that was in the drawer and assumed I had my wallet, when in reality, I had Sam's wallet. Right. I used his wall- car- debit card uh-huh. to buy gas at, at, on the car. 7-Eleven. All of this, all of that. So I'm sitting there. I see it. It all clicks. It's like that like moment where everything falls in, into place, and I'm like, oh, okay. And then I give you the call. I'm walking. I can see you like as I was walking and calling you. I was so mad. Yeah. I was livid. But now the alternator works. I've got a functional phone, even if it's ugly. Um, I have my Sam wallet. Sam has his wallet. He never lost it. Um, for real. Um, we've got all of our debit cards. We've got uh, you know all of that uh, kind of stuff. Um, and that's that. So and that so here's the alternator. Story. That's the alternator story um, with that. So here's what I'm going to say. Uh, this Thanksgiving, we're thankful. <laughs> we're <laughs> thankful. I have a car that's running. That we have our wallet. That's all that kind of stuff. We want to wish you guys a happy ha- Thanksgiving. A happy Thanksgiving. Happy and, Thanksgiving. And uh, that'll be uh, just a couple of days after you listen to this. Um, and then and we're going to get into some Star Wars now. Um, with that, before <laughs> we do time. that, though, I want to announce that um, uh, we're going to be joining a radio network. It's yeah. an internet radio, a helium radio network. It's the largest internet radio network um exclusive internet radio network uh in the country it's had five million people tune in uh in 2019 uh, to their radio network um averages about uh, 400,000 listeners per month and they have asked us to join their stable of shows they've got uh, five, uh four or five different stations um we are going to be on their tuesday evenings lineup uh prime time on their helium after dark network um our station and the reason they're putting us on that is because that's the entertainment uh network um, with that and so let's just a little a little disclaimer here our show is going to stay the exact same we're going to continue to be family friendly and the content that will be going out there is exactly what we do uh, on this show all the time um, but other shows on that network sometimes throw some some you know uh, off color language and things like that in there so uh, just be aware of that if you tune into helium radio after uh, dark network but we're excited um, yeah, yeah it'll be fun that. All right. Uh, you guys want to talk about next week's podcast or last week's? Uh, oh, come uh, on, Dad. Uh, last week's podcast poll of the week. Are you brainless? I never ask that question until after I've done it. What? All right, last week's podcast poll of the week was really simple. We talked about L337, and it was L337 is either a great droid, annoying, just another droid, or other comment below. I put, uh, I think I put a great droid. I liked her. Yeah. Um, um, see, Nate, I think you I said, said just another droid. Yes, Nathan. because yeah. I said a great droid. Yeah, okay. Uh, 66.7% agreed with Nathan, uh, Sam and I, six, uh, a great droid. Second place was annoying, 21.4%. Wow, that's rude. Uh, percent. Uh, 10.7% came in at just another droid, and then we had 1.2%. Um, uh, other comment below. And uh, who's got the first? Uh, I have this one, and it's from... Cam Vanth, the creator of Star Wars Mediocrity, at Cam Ray. Yeah, good old Cam Ray. He's our, mm-hmm. he's our Ray. buddy of ours. Over um, there in Tampa. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Maybe I'm terrible, but I think she's annoying. Yeah. Which, well, you're entitled to your opinions. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people felt that way. A lot of people didn't like her. Really? So, yeah, that's it. Oh, um, I have Daniel T. Foster. He's at weird one, W-E-R-D. but it's E-E. Yeah, W-E-E-R-D. That's weird. One. Uh, that is weird. Uh, there should be an entire post-sequel trilogy trilogy about her brain going back into a droid body and her leading the droid alliance to end machine oppression. Droid, please. Interesting. Yeah, I'll take it. Interesting idea. Mm-hmm. Yep. And this one's from Corellian Blue at Blue Corellian. Very easy. Um, said, plus, she is the brains inside the Falcon. Yeah, she like, had a gift of ho- a ah. gift of Homer. Or this uh, Corellian Blue had a gift of Homer screaming or something like, oh! Right, yeah. Yeah, so... 
Yeah. She's got a point. Yeah, definitely. She does. It's actually a he, I think. Uh, I just mistake. I don't know why I, I said she. Not that we're going to assume anyone's uh, gender or their pronouns um, <laughs> with that. Okay. Um, we don't want to be canceled. We're going to talk about cancel culture a little bit on this show a couple what? different times. Oh, yeah. yeah Wait. On this episode. I yeah. know of one. Yeah. Um, this week's uh, coming up poll, you know, we're talking about Chopper on this show if we ever get to the main topic. Um, <laughs> Um, this the best thing about Chopper is his connection with Hera, that stubborn streak. He's voiced by Dave Filoni, or other comment below. So, what are you going to pick of those? Uh, his connection with Hera. Okay, BB Nate. Uh, definitely Dave Filoni. Dave I Filoni. Just, I've always, oh, yeah. I always love that. Yeah, I do. I do too. All right. Um, well, uh, we we rolled through the podcast poll results quickly, so we could get to some other more meteor. Star Wars related topics. Yeah, we're still going to have to roll through them quickly. We are going to we're going to talk through them pretty quickly here. Um, So uh, you know we've got that some uh, the last couple of episodes of the Mandalorian that we haven't talked about, and there was really not much in them. Nah, we'll we'll talk a little bit about those. Couple minutes. Um, Oculus decided to just drop a Star Wars VR game on everybody surprisingly, and Mm -hmm. then. Daisy Ridley, Daisy Ridley, did I just say that? Yes, yeah. Daisy Ridley. There you go. Actually, has some thoughts on cancel culture. That's all up next on Hot Takes. This is where the fun begins. Well, you want the bad news or the really bad news? Impressive. Every word in that sense was wrong. All right, all right. Bo Katan is it real life. Yeah, Dark Troopers are back, and Doctor Pershing may be the Rosetta Stone. Wait, what, when did the Dark uh, Troopers come back? Dark. Oh, Troopers? is that the? Oh, oh. and Doctor Pershing may be the Rosetta Stone of the sequel trilogy era. Chapters eleven and twelve of the Mandalorian are out, um, and they did not disappoint. We got new Mandos, Frog Lady, and Frog Dude were reunited <laughs> and had a baby. That was the sweetest part. It was Baby Yoda awesome. didn't eat the baby. Oh, and. And then there's that whole Bo Katan thing, and then the promise of Ahsoka Tano and clones on Navarro and Moff Gideon's return, and then that ending to chapter 12. Um, that was crazy. All right, Samuel the Hutt. That is me. What did you think about these episodes? Oh, uh, they were great. Uh, like, there's, <laughs> I don't, I'm, I, there's so much I could say, but I won't. No, um, feel free. Elaborate a little bit. Go for Okay. It. Um, I feel like the episode with Bo Katan was short but it fit a lot in there um it was really well done um we learned about why mando wears the helmet and how he's actually yeah what did you guys think about the the children of the watch stuff and the way bo katan responded to to taking off his mask and he's freaking out you're not really mandalorians and all that what did you think about that part she handled herself really well i feel like because like she ruled Mandalore at one point. Like, Mando has no room to speak. That's true. Regard. Mandalorian, who's not even from Mandalore, uh-huh. is telling the former Mandalore uh-huh. that she's not Mandalorian. Right. <laughs> Hold on. This one deserves this. Great kid. Don't get cocky. Uh, After the Mandalorian was like, you're not Mandalorian. Where did you get that armor? She's like, this armor has been in my family for generations. <laughs> exactly. Like, who are you? You yeah. made yours from armor from the purse. What did you think like, about that that interaction with between Mando and, and uh, Bo-Katan? I thought that the whole interaction between the episode was really good. She handled herself very well. She also respected his culture by kind of saying this is the way at some points at one point it was was sarcastic though but the ending though kind of still felt like okay no she was more like this is the way this is what okay supposed and i think that i think that mandalorian is starting to move closer to removing his helmet i mean yeah we saw that in this episode yeah and and, and of course because this episode doesn't come out until mando mondays you guys realize under understand that like Within the Star Wars fan community, forty-eight hours. Mando Monday is when you're allowed to start talking about ah, spoilers. So we're okay, able to okay. talk about spoilers for the dis- it, yeah for both okay, of these episodes. Perfect. So, perfect. Um, you know, there's a lot of people on on Twitter, social media, face, Facebook, and such have been talking about asking, uh, you know, speculating as to what Bo Katan's feelings towards Din Djarin was when she realizes he's part of the Children of the Watch and, pity. and some of that. Why do you extent. explain that? That's what I thought, but Just explain why you think that he's been brainwashed in an mm. extent into believing that while yes he is a mandalorian he's not it's not the true mandalorian way um and there's really not much you can do to help him there because he's so he's been raised like this for years now so it was probably a sense of pity you- i think that she felt pity and fear fear for baby yoda being put into this culture oh wow i hadn't thought about that like well i mean right after she said that and that they take finally zing and then brainwash them practically she looked at baby yoda and was like 
a little worried that that same thing is going to now happen to him. Wow. So I think she felt that, but I think that she felt like she left her mark on him and maybe he'll change his ways, mm. even though yeah. probably not. I, I really do feel like she looks at, at Din Djarin and sees herself um, years earlier. I think yeah. she sees herself oh, with Death Watch, yeah. where she's a zealot, she's a fundamentalist, she's a, a religious you know, fanatic, mm. and she's willing to sell out even her own sister in order for her her beliefs on, on about Death Watch and the Mandalore and right. things like that. And until... Uh, Maul, spoiler alert, Maul kills Satine, that's who she is. And she sees in and she sees that in Din Djarin, um, yeah. with that. So when you say pity, that's where I'm going. I think she's she's like something's gotta help him see this. Um do we see Bo Katan later on in the series? Or in the uh, in the season? Yeah, I mean they have to. I I uh, I wanna say yeah, just because it's such an interesting character, a yeah. beloved character. It was fun. Yeah, I think they can and I think they can bring her in pretty easily too. Yeah. Let's talk about this uh, last episode, the one that just uh, literally yeah. came out today, uh, chapter twelve. Um what was the name of the siege? Yeah, the um, siege with it. So they go back to Navarro um because his ship won't go to uh, so oh, we didn't even talk about the biggest moment oh, of yeah. chapter eleven. Oh, um, uh, the what are you talking about? Yeah, that whole Ahsoka Tano. Oh, that sends, part, yeah. She, J- uh, Mando wants to find other uh, Jedi to, to connect Yoda, and of course, Bo Katan knows where Jedi are. Um, I, and she sends. She says, "You're going to go to what's it, Corvus? Yeah, uh, you're going to go the to Forest Cor- Moon of Corvus, the Forest Moon of Corvus, and see a Jedi named Ahsoka Tano." Mm-hmm. And so we've we've known it was coming. We've thought you know, the rumors have been there, the spoilers have been there, but now it's coming. Just the one thing I am so excited to see is Ahsoka's reaction to another kind of species of Yoda. I oh, want to yeah. see how she reacts to that because there, she's not seen them except for Yaddle, maybe. Yeah, I don't know if she ever saw Yaddle or not. So, hmm. yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. And, it, you know, I think a lot of people initially, when they first saw Chapter 11, thought, all right, next episode, Ahsoka's coming. If you listened to, to um, uh, our show before, you know we, we've been predicting for months. Chapter 5. Chapter, or episode 5 of this season, right? Chapter, chapter 13. Dave Filoni wrote it. Dave Filoni directs it. It's the only one he's doing this season. It's his baby. It's, gotta it's be the Ahsoka. only one Ahsoka's coming. So we knew Ahsoka wasn't coming in this next episode. So Mando in Chapter 12, he's on his way to try to get to the Forest Moon of Corvus, and his ship is crap from what happened to yeah, it. Yeah, that Mon Calamari did not did do nothing. a great job. And he's like, oh, talk about the opening with Baby Yoda. Oh, that was perfect after after the other day. So it opens and... Yeah, this felt a lot like what we felt they like. They can't yeah. get the ship working. And he's like, fix the wires. So he goes and he looks and there's this little corridor that he put Baby Yoda in because Baby Yoda could fit. And he's got these two wires, right? <laughs> he's like, red, red wire, wire, blue wire. Yeah. He's like, put the red wire where the blue wire goes. And Baby Yoda's like looking at it and he puts the blue wire the, where the blue wire goes. He's like, no, red wire where the blue wire goes, but, but don't let him touch. And it was it was so patient and Baby Yoda didn't understand and then he touches them together. Yeah. It was so cute and it was just awesome. I loved seeing kind of that relationship baby it did feel like, like a dad it and his does. kid it's getting more and more like a dad and his kid and he's trying to he's trying to be patient with baby yoda and he, but he's frustrated with baby yoda as a dad i related to man and then they go and they're getting some soup or something downstairs and he actually lifts up his helmet just enough yeah. to, to drink the soup which is which, the first time he's in done that front of baby yoda that's the first time he didn't take it off that. all the way yeah but <laughs> that's fine uh, yeah but uh, that'll, that's cool I, and, is he gonna take his mask off I yeah hope. i think by the end of for this. at least baby yoda it has to be um yeah but or maybe it, omera hmm? from season four, uh, one uh, chapter yeah, four maybe. i don't know uh, if they can bring that back, back. They're going back they're going back anyway, um i promise you they're getting married I, baby yoda's getting closer to speaking his first word yeah he's trying so all right so they get on navarro and it's a side quest it's a side quest episode they're like we can fix your ship but um, while you're here can you help us out yeah exactly and you're like oh great here we go you knew it was gonna happen right even um, mandel was like that oh no yeah here we go again so um so basically uh, the side quest is the the empire's got another Mithril? facility on on not well we, we got to move on so uh he's on navarro they've got another facility on navarro get uh, uh, uh grief carga wants uh, him, Mando, and Cara Dune, 
and, and Mithril, the guy that he put in Carbonite in the very first episode, guy. Bluefish guy, to go and blow up the facility so that they can be completely free of the Empire. Yeah. Right? It's an easy in, easy out mission. Anytime someone tells you something is easy, don't believe them, especially a YouTube video about, about changing an alternator. Yeah. yeah no, they that, didn't tell. They didn't want us about was losing easy. wallets Everything or else was messed up. Okay. Um, so... Um, they go, they get there, and it's when they're at the the facility that something really interesting happens. What are we talking about? When oh they my oh Lord. the cloning tubes. Okay, oh, there's, yeah, there's yeah. A bad thing. There's just a lot of interesting stuff that happened. But um, did that they, look like Snoke's? I it just looked like weird creatures. I honestly that, think that they were like Cardoon said. It's a lab. I think they're trying to make a new clone body for a deteriorating emperor. That. I think yeah, this is the and and so we see a video. They play a hologram, a hologram from three days before this all happened with Doctor Pershing from season one. If you have listened to this show before, last year when we were doing, um, called it. We set as soon as we started seeing the cloner symbol on his arm, we're like, "This is a, this." He's is using a, Baby Yoda to be, make a clone for the Emperor. Yep, we it knew it. I know why um, the client. I don't remember. Did we ever get his name? No. He's just call him the client. The client. I know why he was okay with him being brought in dead. Because they just needed his They just blood. needed his blood. And Dr. Pershing didn't want to just take his blood one time. He wanted to be able to continue to, to, yeah. feed, to utilize right. it um, with it. So Dr. Pershing wasn't being like generous to baby Yoda, to the child in Dude. season one. No. Uh, episode three. He was doing it for his own benefit. Exactly. So so there are, the, the hologram basically says they've been using the blood with a high, uh, with baby Yoda, uh, baby Yoda's blood to try to. Uh, create these creatures or utilize them in these in these. And they're using beings. Baby Yoda because he has a high M count. M count, Mandal- uh, a midichlorian. Midichlorian, Mandal- Mandal- obviously. Did you, did you ever think that all the sequel trilogy wouldn't have happened if Mando just killed Dr. Pershing right there? <laughs> That's probably true. Um, and, but that wasn't the way it was going to go. So, um, <laughs> really yeah, so, so they... Um, that's you know that's the big reveal in that and then part. Mando finds out that uh, Gideon is still alive. Oh so. yeah, they realize they learn oh. that Moff Gideon is still alive. So then you know they get they they, they blow up the base the the, the Imperial base. You know Mando escapes, uh, saves so the awesome day. Chasing. His ship is is repaired um, by this, and then we have an after scene. Mm-hmm. Um, we also that. see Baby Yoda vomit. That was pretty. Cool. That was that awesome. was adorable. Okay. Um, so what's the after scene? Uh, we get on a Star Destroyer and, or not a Star Destroyer, some Corvette sort of thing. And uh, we find out that one of the repair technicians that worked on the Riser Crest was actually working for the Empire and they planted a tracker. And then they go to let Moff Gideon know. And I don't remember exactly what he said. The biggest thing that happens doesn't really matter what he says. He's, they want the, they want to know that the baby's still alive. Uh, the baby's child still is still alive. alive. Child is still alive. That kind of thing. And then um, he turns around and he's like, you know, we're preparing for, for something. I don't remember exactly what he says, but you see these cylinders and they're like, like these figures and like these, like they're giants and they look like they're in, in like robots or they're stored. They're either droids or they're really big stormtrooper armor. The, the, the theory right now is that these are bringing in the dark troopers from dark empire, the game in the nineties. Um, they were like robots. They were giant. Um, and they were kind of like the bosses of that game. Like, yeah, that's it. And yeah, I so, pulled up a picture. Oh, but here's exactly here's the thing. Like but it. but I, it's not going to be. They're not going to be droids. They're, you think they're, they're going to be people? They're 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 cloned like m- m- no. uh, uh, something. I, like I, I think they're think, droids. I don't. I judging don't. by where it was set up, I, I think they're droids. Just judging by how it, yeah, like the way up. they were stacked together. I think like they're. That. I think they're like the dark troopers, but I don't think they're droids. I think that they're, it's, it's clone related. Uh, little. Well, I'm curious to see it. Little fun fact. Yeah. The, the source for that gave them all the tracker and stuff was actually the second time we've ever seen that species. The yeah. first time was Greaves from Squadrons. I noticed that. Huh. You don't remember the 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 weird big Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah. was the first time, and oh, this yeah. was the second time. So I'm happy they're at least bringing stuff yeah. in from that. All right. Yeah. So did we get the cloning thing with Doctor Pershing and yes. and the Palpatines? Right. Oh, I think we're oh, of totally course. on. Of course, of course. What else would they be cloning for? Okay. Good. Next week is the episode that we've all been waiting for. Um, mini spoiler here: the leaked title is "The Jedi." Um, and it is written and directed again, like we mentioned earlier, by Dave Filoni. This Good old Davies. This is the way. This is the way. All right. Tales from Galaxy's Edge is out. The source I'm using for this article is inside the magic.com. Uh, so it was just poor lunch yesterday. Um, we had grilled cheese. We did. And we're good. It was good. Um, I had two grilled cheese. Yeah, you did. And you put crackers inside. Salt yeah, yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. 
Saltine Don't dish crackers. it until you've tried it. It's nasty. You haven't um, tried it. <laughs> when I started, uh, anyway, eating my grilled cheese, I started seeing tweets that the new VR experience, Tales from the Galaxy Edge, was just released that moment. Which I don't think any of us really knew that that was going to be nope. happening that day, but uh, we downloaded it right away. Name uh, Nate and Sam, you guys have both played it, so Nate, you get to go first. Tell me what you think. All right, we're going to give a little bit of a pros and cons list, but going through it really quick. I'm going to give the pros first. So pros, a fantastic experience. Um, the gunplay is really nice. The inventory is really nice. The graphics are fantastic. The score is great, and the voice acting is great. It's hearing, it's fun hearing Bobby Moynihan. Back in the game, back in Star Wars. It's just, it's a great game. Orca yeah. from Resistance, yeah. It's just a great game. The Cantina is a lot of fun. You can play darts. You can yeah, activate a jukebox. and So, like, like, you can interact with things all around everything. like that. Like, the jukebox has songs that are from, that Rex plays on Galaxy's Edge. Nice. You can go out onto the lookout. And if we, next time you go to Galaxy's Edge, I can point out exactly where the Cantina yep. is. Um, you can look out right above the Falcon and everywhere. Like it's exactly cool. the same. Um, Does it feel like Galaxy's Edge? Yes, yes. You can't. Well, walk we don't around Black Spire Outpost itself yet. Okay. Yeah, but you think it'll happen? I think it might happen. But the ways that they're doing the DLCs are the most interesting ways you could create DLCs and like access them. So what you have to do is the bartender knows a lot of these tales. About Jedi, and which is stuff. Hence the name tale High, Re- High Edge. Republic, yeah. and we get one tale, which he's like, okay, um, I don't have these ingredients for this drink, but if you get me this ingredients that comes goes with this tale, I'll tell you the tale. So you have to go out and collect these ingredients, and then go back to the cantina and drink this drink, and he'll tell you the tale, and you'll be able to play through that level. It's really it's like cool. you're living the tale or whatever. It's just it's really cool and. That yesterday, I played our first piece of content from the High Republic, which wow. was fantastic. It was a great, everything about it was just great. And it was. The story was cool. You got very, to see Yoda at I like did. three, four hundred years younger. I, um, can I give spoilers or do I wait? I, I would wait. wait on that. I, I would wait. wait. Just, okay. Because I haven't played it. So. Very dark. Oh, wow. But, and. Short, yes, but dark. Very. So this is just the DLC you're talking about. Yes, and this is going to very much tie into the High Republic with with you think so? What huh? makes the Jedi afraid? Wow, Sam, what was your experience insane. like playing it? Um, I didn't get super far, um, or especially not story wise. But I can speak for the gameplay. It is honestly one of the nicest playing VR. And you do games lots of VR stuff. Yeah, no, it's honestly one of the nicest playing games I've ever played. Um. You everything's responsive when you pick up to it. Everything's snappy. Um, it runs smooth. Graphics are good for that kind of game. We were using the first quest, but I've heard that on the quest two, it's even better. Wow. Um, plays great. A lot of fun. Uh, the characters so far are, are a lot of fun. Uh, the game, the gunplay is not super easy. Um, it gives you a challenge, and you can die. We died multiple times, so okay. it's it's fun in that regard. There's porgs, which we always love. So yeah. So talk about the porg. So, um, Even Nate has to the do this. second time you go back to the cantina, he's just, he's telling tales. He's just talking about stuff. And this guy doesn't like porgs because they're everywhere in his cantina. Like every time the jukebox was broken down because a porg got into it and started chewing on the cables. He so, said he woke up to three of them watching him sleep one night. <laughs> he's wow. like, they're really cute and they're great until you wake up and see three of them staring at you. Um, and he says, yeah, Chewbacca brought one home from Oops. brainless. My bad. Come on, dad. I bumped a but, uh, he's like, yeah, Chewbacca brought one home, a couple of home from, uh, Kashyyyk, his home planet. And I'm like, oh, that's nervous. <laughs> yeah. Cause that's, <laughs> I'm pretty sure the only porg we know of from that has Kashyyyk. Been to Kashyyyk. Yeah. Yeah. That's so And then he cool. said he brought a couple, which means Turbis still had his girlfriend. He's so. got his girlfriend. That's and uh, looks like the Porgs fully populated Batu. Yeah. They're, they're everywhere. Gone. All right. So, uh, Nathan, you said there's some cons. So what are the cons? Um, there is a bug to where, at least on the quest, if you remove your helmet and put it back on, you're either the stuff in your hand just disappears or the stuff in your pockets so there's some glitches that they're um, gonna have to fix is invisible so okay. you, it's just it's very hard so you have to that, pause it if you're gonna take your helmet in off. that respect um another really hindering thing is we're a group of three that all want to play this game and i played the game for i got close to the end last night mm. um i had played for two hours or so 
And Sam decided, okay, I'm going to start a new game, which we thought meant new save file to where we could both be playing different save files, which is normally how it works. Um, it's, it's not, that's not how it is in this one. Uh-oh. So every time the game saves itself, it adds it to the files, which there's six files that are available. So Sammy has six saves going right now. So all of my progress was just white. Oh. Overwritten. So we're going to, they need to fix that. They need to add something to, to where you can have multiple, you can people, have multiple people. You can't have multiple accounts on the quest itself because it is a Facebook account um linked so it's they just need to figure something out like a guest account or something something yeah okay so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to have one person play through it on their own time and then do it again no just start a new game with us and start over so i'm gonna have to start over so it appears that there's going to be further episodes or dlcs or something like that that's going to be coming yeah uh, Mm -hmm. in the future awesome uh when they do uh we'll just uh we'll 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 be downloading them and playing them and for sure giving you our thoughts about it. So one of the best right. VR games I've played. Last one, real quick. Daisy Ridley has some thoughts on Baby Yoda's appetite. So <laughs> uh, this is from IGN.com. After a couple of weeks of silliness uh, masquerading as wokeness, <laughs> uh, Daisy Ridley has shared her thoughts on Baby Yoda's eating habits. If you'll recall, in Chapter Ten of The Mandalorian, uh, Baby Yoda continued to eat the Frog Lady's eggs over and over again, even though he was told not to. This wasn't really all that popular with some of the fans. Uh, some even went to the extent of calling it genocide um, which we might want to go and like like study, find that word let's study things like the holocaust before we start saying that um anyway uh that might be a bit of an overreaction anyway ign um was interviewing daisy ridley regarding her soon to be released film chaos walking with that guy tom holland yep and mads mickelson and mads mickelson uh when they decided to ask her what she thought about this latest star wars controversy um because she was talking about the mandalorian she likes yeah. it she watches every episode really yeah that's and cool uh ridley responded with a laugh uh saying oh cancel culture um, <laughs> look mando's got to eat Yoda's got to eat. Or he's, Yoda's got to get strong. That's just that. No, I'm like, Yoda, do your thing. The creature got to be where she needed to be with the eggs. It's all good. It was beautiful. <laughs> so Sam, agree or disagree with Daisy? I agree with Daisy. It's funny. He didn't eat all the eggs. They got a kid. Well, let baby Yoda be a and kid. Baby and baby Yoda wanted hungry. to keep it as a pet. So I, it's everything was fine at the end. It's just kind of a... Just it's just a bit of an overreaction. A little bit of an overreaction from some people. Yeah, um, with it. Uh, BB Nate uh, really also said that she's very satisfied with Ray's story and how it ended in T Ross. You liked T Ross. Um, you enjoyed that movie a lot. Do you think that we'll ever see uh, Ray in Star Wars again? No, because she's making it very appendant. Uh, appendant? Uh, I don't know if that's a apparent. word. Apparent. We'll have to look I don't that know one why up. I said that. Yeah. Apparent um, that. She's always saying it was a very satisfying ending. I loved the ending. The ending was great. She the ending. Keeps saying ending. I uh-huh. think she wants to get away from stupid Star Wars yeah. fans, which makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> she's, I mean, she 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 threw out the cancel culture word uh, in that. So, um, all right, uh, Chaos Walking, that movie that we talked about a minute ago, um, that she's going to be in there with Tom Holland and and Mads Mikkelsen. Yes. Which one Galen was Mads? Urso. Galen Urso. Okay. It wasn't Lars Mikkelsen who did Thrawn. No. In the voice of Thrawn. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, his, it's scheduled to be released in January, but come on. I mean, seriously, the movie was filmed like four years ago, and with COVID, it'll probably just go straight to video on demand or Amazon. Probably. Uh, or something like that. All right. Can we talk about our main topic? It's going to be fast. It's chopper. <sighs> yeah. It's always fast. Well, no, it's just about certain faster. characters. So, so. Yeah. Uh, One of the most interesting and unique droids in Star Wars is C-110P. Or Chopper. Better known as Chopper. Uh, over the four seasons of Star Wars Rebels, we saw him fight with Ezra and Zeb more times than we could count. And in classic Star Wars droid fashion, he saved the day more times than that. Um, but the thing we love most about this cantankerous can... You like, like, you like that, was that? that was good. That was good. That was like on an onomatopoeia. No, uh, did you have to look uh, up cantankerous? No, I typed that without spell check. No, did you have to look it up to mean and see what it means? No, I know that word. I was cantankerous. But you don't know what onomatopoeia means. So. I guess not. All right. Uh, in his ability, uh, the thing we love about it. All right. Now I got to go back. Let's, let's just let's just do it. But the thing that we love the most about this cantankerous can is his ability to make friends with others when it appeared they'd never get along. Key religions and ancient weapons are no match for a good blaster at your side, kid. Rebellions are built on hope. The force is with me, and I am with the Force.
If you live long enough, you see the same eyes in different people. All right. Let's just do this. Jump right into Talk it. Talk about Chopper. What do you guys think about him? Yeah, I mean, let's... I mean, we were talking about how he makes friends with others when it seems like they, you know, they would never get along. I think the prime example <laughs> of this is uh, Ezra and Zeb. Oh, he hated Ezra and Zeb in the first. Oh season. man, they were both like. And Zeb had been with him on the crew for b- long before that. Yeah, I mean, they were both like, "I'm going to disassemble him." They're like, "Save a few bolts for me." Like, yeah. you know, they <laughs> they were co- never got along. I mean, they were beating the crap out of each other. There was the whole. There's uh, an episode where they were like getting the fuel or whatever, and yeah. they didn't check the fuel line because, because Chopper, Chopper got in the way and got in. Like, they're constantly fighting. <laughs> but by the end of the series, I mean, sure, they still fight, but they like respect each other more. And and they honestly, it's like this love sort of thing between them. Yeah. Um, and it's this really beautiful relationship, how it goes from like the annoying brothers constantly fighting to, yeah, they're fighting, but it's because they still like each other. Yeah. A lot of fun yeah maybe and, Nate, you you've got this thing for ap5 i have and a so thing for we, the droid the, the both droids. you love droids in general but i have a thing for both droids and rebels they're both really cool and i love just their relationship it, it started with like both of them because chopper is sarcastic and snarky and so is ap5 so <laughs> they clash with their personalities and they're just throwing them at each other constantly and the first time they meet and we see them grow in this series to basically becoming best friends. Like, yeah, they, kind of almost R two C three PO type. Very much so. Very Which much. they don't get along all the time either. No, no. but oh, they gosh, yeah. but they respect each other a lot, and I love just the growing of AP five is very important to Chopper in his story through Rebels. Mm. If it, it helps him grow, it helps him connect better with Ezra and Zeb because he learns how to connect with people better and even though it's just a droid droids still have personalities and so i think that ap5 is just so important to how chopper is feels Hmm. to people it's it's great i love it that's awesome you know the thing that i love so much about chopper's character arc and just sort of how he fits into this is is it kind of ties into the fact that the rebels family the specter crew um is it it is a family Mm -hmm. right and so you, you know, you can fight with your brothers or, or like Zeb and, and Ezra are fighting with Chopper and Chopper's annoying them and they're getting on each other's, you know, case. And, and then, you know, they bring in AP5 as part of the family and it takes a while for him to fully get integrated. But once he does, there's this relationship there. Um, but when push comes to shove, I remember this. My family fought growing up, like big time. My dad was a hard man to be around. You guys don't remember him, but Nathan never even got a chance to meet him because uh, he passed just before Nathan was born. But um, he was a hard man and he yelled a lot and we yell a lot in this family we we get frustrated with each other and that type of thing but one thing that i always remember growing up was when push came to shove when something needed to happen to to protect our family or to support our family or something like that we came together Mm. and you see that happening with chopper a lot especially in the finale era you know period where they're you know chopper's gonna go he's gonna figure out how to help save kanan and he's gonna and then he's gonna have he's gonna go save save hera and 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 all of this they're working together he's a part of this group trying to to bring it together and i love that no matter how much you disagree that's that's kind of the uh uh, let's just do it. Let's just um, dad, go, moment? dad moment here. So um, I am your father. You know, Chopper is a great example of how to interact with those who frankly just get on your nerves <laughs> or worse. Uh, he doesn't like Ezra and Zeb and AP5 and probably everybody else uh, as part of the crew, maybe except for Hera. Yeah. Um, but he doesn't have to. Uh, he's still willing to work together with them to help them when they need him. And in our crazy social media world, it, it tries to convince us that everyone has to agree with us um, with that. They don't. You don't have to agree uh, with everybody. In fact, I tweeted out this morning because I was thinking about this stuff. I said, if both of us agree on 100% of everything, then one of us isn't very intelligent because we should be able to uh, to disagree. We should be able to have different opinions. But do it respectfully. Yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the things that you know I love about so many of you guys that follow us on Twitter and Facebook and such. Um, you know, we have pretty much blocked everybody that was negative, like just toxic, and gotten rid of them. And I know we've been blocked by people that uh, don't like us. And I totally get that. And I don't mean that to be to say you know we want to block people. But the reality is, let's try to just work together. When you start getting toxic, there's a difference between being cantankerous like Chopper and being toxic. 
And so, um, you know, we don't have to get along or agree on everything, but we do, um, and we should get along uh, with each other. And next week, we're just going to jump. BB, BB Nate, who are we talking about next we're week? talking about BB-8. Yeah. yeah. Hey. That's good. Joy, please. Everybody All loves right. that guy. All right. So uh, anything else we want to talk about? Anything else? Yeah. So the Lego Star Wars holiday special is out, and it was amazing. Fantastic. You just got to go watch. It was perfect. It was perfect. Just describe it, was it in one great. sentence. Sam, uh, BB Nate, you go first. Describe, oh, describe it in one it sentence. Describe it in one sentence. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. It, I'm just. You could do a run on sentence too if you need. Old school Lego humor. All right, good. Sam, Sam, the hut. Um, I felt like a fitting wrap up for the, those characters, the original, or for the uh, Skywalker saga. Nice. I think I think it was, um, perfectly. Making fun of Star Wars while still honoring Star yes. Wars. Yes. Um, with it. And the best moment for me was this. Hello there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, all three of them uh, on that. Um, who's next? Oh, it's me. Uh, George Lucas uh, has weighed in on that in- infamous Han shooting first scene. What did he say? He said he never intended for Han to be a bad guy. He never intended for it to look like he shot first. It was bad editing and bad cutting. And he always <laughs> intended it to be uh, the other way around. So. Oh, wow. He's still wrong. So. Yeah. So we've gotten our first glimpse at of Disney World's Galactic Star Cruiser. Now we got a first glimpse of our room, and it looks like a standard room, probably the super value room that goes on the bottom floor because there's going to be three <laughs> floors oh, that's of true. different rooms. Okay. Um, I honestly think that the bunk beds are, are not as small as we saw them in the photo. Okay. I think that just might be how the, the lens that they chose. Might be deeper than it looks. Yes. But the great thing about this whole hotel is you're going to be completely immersed in Star Wars no matter what. You're going to park in a separate parking lot. They're going to transport you on a Star Wars space theme shuttle to the place to dock onto the spaceship. And when you're going out. You're going to be going out to Batu and not Hollywood Studios mm. itself. And the sh- shuttle, somebody looked really closely at where the shuttle is going to be parked. It looks like the shuttle might be parked on a moving platform. I've, I've seen the platform actually on um, an, uh, 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 a post on social media. It turns. So it pulls onto the platform. It turns. The whole platform turns. So then you get out in Batu, and then it turns again um, as, they're, as they're moving through. Good so Lord. you never look like you le- you're in and it, the and park. It you're just and straight into it's Batu. It's supposed to feel like you're just... Which is probably some of the same technology that they use for Rise of the Resistance, yep. which is confusing for, uh, for us. Because we, <laughs> yeah, we still we can't figure that one figure out. That one out. All right, cool. Sam? Yeah. All right, well... Um, oh, that was it. No, we, yeah. that, was, that was it. All right. Hey, thank you guys for enduring our fun 40-minute story at the beginning. That was crazy. That, How long was that? It was almost 40 minutes, 35 minutes uh, uh, of that. But that was a lot of fun to tell, and I hope it made you laugh and uh, got to know us a little bit better. It made me cry internally. I was crying <laughs> inside. Um, so... Um, but yeah, so next week we'll try to do a little bit more Star Wars talk and a little less of... Uh, I'm sure alter. there'll be more to talk about with uh, Ahsoka. No more. Oh, next week we're going to be a lot. It's going to be Ahsoka heavy. Um, yeah. I'm almost uh, 100% sure on that. All right. Anything else you guys want to say? May the force be with you. May the force be with you. May the force be with you. Always. This party's over. I like that monkey. Don't get technical with me. Join, please. Yep, yep.